have all this shaking going on and we have a way to measure it with the seismograph. So we want to be able to report just for the news wants to know, people want to know, we want to know to collect data. How big was that earthquake? So we talk about it in terms of the size and we can do it with the intensity for how much damage or through the ground motion and the magnitude of that motion. The first scale we'll look at is the Mercalli intensity scale and this one measures the degree of damage so how much damage was done by shaking and we note the Mercalli scale by Roman numerals and the damage then is in these zones so on the map of the southeast you see there's a red area where the epicenter is right around Charleston South Carolina and away from that in colors with the Roman numerals is the areas where there's decreasing damage away from the epicenter from the earthquake in Charleston. So the damage decreases right away from that epicenter. That's the Mercalli intensity scale. The Roman numerals from the modified Mercalli scale then represent either a high or great amount of damage or minor damage, like a Roman numeral three or smaller. What can be misleading with this scale is maybe there's a poorly built building that crumbles. And so you would estimate the intensity a little high with that. Or maybe there was a big earthquake, but the people who were measuring it were further away. So it's hard to get a real accurate measurement. This kind of scale is really good for times when there wasn't a seismograph around, and maybe it's based on newspaper articles or um, letters that people have written back and forth at the time of that earthquake, so historical documents. At the Richter magnitude, it's gotten from the seismograph. So from the seismograph, we have that P and S wave arrival time difference. We also can get from there, what is the largest wave? What is the amplitude of that largest wave? So because we know the P and S arrival time difference, that's related to the distance from the epicenter and the amplitude or the greatest amount of shaking at a certain distance from the epicenter, we can give it a number for the Richter magnitude. The moment magnitude is usually given after the Richter, and that's going to be um, where a um, specialist has gone in and figured out the fault geometry and how big the fault rupture was, and um, seismologist, and tweak that Richter scale a little bit to relate it to the size of the rupture along that fault. Magnitude is a scale that is logarithmic. So a magnitude 6 earthquake is 10 times stronger than a magnitude 5. So hearing the difference between a 5 and a 6, you know, you may not think that's that much difference, but it's actually a 10 times difference. So a magnitude 7 is a very, very strong earthquake, and it's a 1,000 times stronger than a magnitude four that you may or may not feel. You'd feel it, but it's like, oh, what was that? It wouldn't be like a big scary thing where a seven would be a huge event. Here are some earthquakes from the past. And at the top of this, we have um, the Chilean earthquake in 1960. So the top here is a 9.5. That's a very large earthquake. Just off of that, going down the scale, there was an earthquake in 1964 in Alaska that was called the Good Friday quake because it happened on Good Friday and that was devastating for the city of Anchorage. Big pieces of the shoreline actually slumped down into the ocean during that event and there were offsets of the roads all around Anchorage. So going back down there in Japan, this is the one that caused the damage at the nuclear power plant. And in Krakatoa, that was a big earthquake related to a volcanic eruption. And on here now, then we have, um, well, that was the eruption, not, that was the energy released relative to the um, energy released during an earthquake event. <clears throat> 
hydrogen bomb is in here that's going to be more energy release than uh, the 1906 San Francisco quake. So the San Francisco earthquake in 1906 uh, leveled the city of San Francisco, but the, the leveling of the city was mostly due to uh, fires. The city caught fire and they had a hard time putting those out. And we trickle off of that down here, the Haiti earthquake. That one we saw earlier killed lots of people. Most of that was because of really bad um, and poorly enforced building codes. Loma Prieta, Kobe, Japan. That Kobe, Japan earthquake also had to do somewhat with um, the buildings, uh, the death amount there it was in the thousands with the building codes and um, just being able to get into the city to help save people. The city buildings crumbled into the roadways and it was a, a lot of um, a very densely packed city. It's hard to get the emergency vehicles in there. The last one here is a Northridge earthquake. And that was the one we were talking about with the pancaking of the road and the buildings. Not very many people died in that earthquake, even though it was pretty big, 6.7. And that is because there was not a densely populated area.